Everyone, today is gonna to be a day where we go over the Hyundai Ionic 5. This is not really gonna be about the specs or anything. So it's gonna be a walk around, feel of materials, kind of my opinion, but just kind of get a feel of the car. Um, if you wanna find the specs and all that stuff, probably another video, but let's do a walk around of the Hyundai Ionic 5. And here it is, the Hyundai, the very square Ionic 5. I'm sure you've seen many videos of this car already, but we're just gonna do a quick walk around. Me personally, I have never driven a EV for an extended period of time. It's always been for a couple hours, but I'll give you my first impressions. I've only had the car for about two days, but um, let's go through. So first, styling wise, subjective, but I think this car looks amazing. I personally love this very square look. Very awesome. And you'll see this pixel theme kind of throughout the, the car, obviously. The daytime or the um, daytime running lights, as well as even the turn signal, the pattern on the turn signal. Got your front sensors. Wheels are really interesting. I know they have this and then they have kind of like a similar wheel with like fake spoke style, um, which is interesting. Tire size, for those of you that are curious, it's a 235, 235, 55, 19 inch wheel, which is cool. I believe the 235 is the width, 55 is the sidewall, and then this number is the wheel diameter. So 235 is pretty, I would say pretty average nowadays. Um, yeah, what else on the exterior? Look at that massive accent line cutting across the, the side of the car. Looks great. I love that right there. But again, the pixel theme scattered throughout the car. If you're into panel gaps, here you go. How does that look for you? Got this nice spoiler up top. Oh yeah, this car is this matte material um, or matte finish. I don't know if you'd call it a paint, but it's a really awesome finish. Um, I don't like the day-to-day -day living of it um, just because I know it'll get super dirty. And yeah, but outside of that, it looks awesome. I love this um, matte paint. Here's the rear. Then here's the the charge port. Still have yet to charge the car yet, but on the key, key fob, there is a charge hold button. I assume that's once the car is plugged in, you can, um, or you could do that. There you go. Gives you an indicator on roughly the the charge amounts. And then obviously we have, what was it? I know there's two different types of ports, but for those of you that do know, educate me on that. Close button, which is nice. All right, what else about the exterior? Um, let's start with the, ex the, the back of the car. Are there rear buttons to open? Don't think so, oh, there is right there. Small button to the right of the camera. And yes, there is a camera right there. Really nice opening here, right when you, um, the load floor is nice and flat. So you can feed things in. You got a 12 volt, out, 12 volt on the side. Got tie down points here and here, which are made of plastic, not metal. This is I assume to shut off the power potentially. If you know what that is, let me know. It looks like there used to be a cover here that you can have to cover up the rear. Let's check underneath. Got your tire mobility kit. Some more storage, which is nice. But no spare. And it looks like you can shove this here and leave it open, which is really nice. Check that out. We fold this. Okay. 
you want it to fold the rear seats, you can do so by some, there's, clearly I don't own this car or I would know. I assume from the side, let's go check it out. I have the key in my pocket. Get close to the car. Does it open? It usually does, but I think it's because the trunk is open. But one thing I did find out, you can close the trunk from your key fob. The only difference is if you press the key fob or the button here, it'll close all the way like it normally would. But if you use your key fob, you got to keep it held down. So here, I'm going to hold. Still holding. I'm going to let go. This stops right there. And then if I press it again or hold, it's going to open up, I believe, or continue closing. There you go. So if you hold it, then it'll close all the way and wait, wait for the beeping to stop. So as I get closer to the car, I'm going to lock it, walk away, but I keep my keys here. When I get closer to the car, it should open. If not, it'll do that. The mirrors will fold out. This really cool grab handle, which is actually more comfortable than I expected. There's some grooves back here. If you can see, they fit your hand pretty nicely. Grab that. Opens up into your Hyundai Ionic 5. Let's open up the rear. The rear door is larger than the front. Check that out. Love the designs. Can't say that enough. So I'm gonna fold down these seats first. There you go. So relatively flat load floor, slight incline here. I don't see an ability to do that um, from the rear though, which is interesting. So you can only do it from the front. This is the default position and you can recline backwards. You could recline a lot actually. Check that out. You can recline quite a bit, which is cool. Got your flat load floor in the rear. That B, that EV skateboard architecture design on the door. It's really nice. Kind of soft feels like that vegan leather material here and here. A lot softer here compared to here, but a good plush here even so there's still a little bit of give here this kind of looks like the mini cooper door handle to be honest feels classic uh hyundai plasticky but it feels feels good overall um the closing of door handle is built into the armrest so here you pull if you had um if you'd remember if you're familiar with the 7 series of the late 2000 or what is that, 2013 or so? They had something similar. You grab inside of the handle like this. Really cool, I love how they baked that into the door card here, again, with the pixel designs. And this part, I believe, is made out of uh, recycled material. Correct me if I'm wrong, that part is there. Here's where we get into the hard plastics. Down here, not a cup holder there. And then throughout the cabin, we have these lit up speakers so let's sit in here driving position is where i would be generally speaking i have the seats fully reclined a little air vent here which is nice and you have usb two usb ports here i'm surprised they don't have a usb c to be honest but two there so nice place to be plenty of leg room i am 6'2 so pretty good headroom Sorry for my hair, but if I'm laying reclined, totally fine. I'm gonna go try to stay upright as possible. Still comfortable, I wouldn't prefer this, but still got a little bit of headroom. This is probably the normal position, which actually I touched the top of the, the car. Um, so I'd probably go fully reclined or a little bit upright for me. Again, I'm 6'2", so just keep that in mind. We have a little net cargo, cargo net here, pretty standard. But yeah, no, pretty, pretty standard here, no frills. I will say the seats are relatively comfortable. Um, I would say more comfortable than a Tesla. 
Um, I've only, I'm comparing to a Tesla 3 and a Model Y, um, which is nice. Um, the back of these seats, the front seats are not, are kind of this cloth material, which I think looks great. Um, but yeah, you got nice piping here. If you're into that type of stuff, take a look. And then just in the rear, you have a dome light. LED. Oh yeah, cool. A little compartment down here, but pretty straightforward. You can move front and back, forward and backwards. So I'm going all the way forward. This is the furthest position. And then all the way back, this is the furthest back position. Plenty of room back here. Easy to go in and out. Let's close the door. Nice thunk sound. Let's go into the driver's side now. But before we get in, we have electronic adjustable seats. Forward, back, down, up, tilt, front tilt, then back, forward, and then lumbar support. Hard to see, but it's going up. Again, pixel designs, I love that integration. Same here, really, really nice. And you see that theme in the steering wheel as well. And this kind of cloth material is on the steering wheel. I know it's not cloth, but kind of gives you that feel. And I really like that actually about that design. Um, again, similar to the rear doors, um, same general design, except you got your controls here. Um, yeah, child lockers for windows, automatic front and rear, or um, front windows, unlock, lock um, adjusting your mirrors and then you want your wind your side mirrors to be auto folding or fold them click that here here we have the interior uh, light controls how dimmers dim and then increase traction control hold for the trunk you have park your parking brake and then auto hold auto hold being once you come to a stop take your foot off the gas uh, or off the brake it will hold the car for you until you press gas this is kind of cool, kind of that old speaker grill type material, kind of interesting. But um, again, really speaking to the design, I am not a designer, but I really appreciate it. And the here's the floor of the car in the front, flat all the way through, which is nice. Pedal position's good, pretty standard, manual adjusting steering wheel. And yeah, so let's hop in. We'll start her up. Before we start her up, let's kind of go over the controls here. Got your uh, radio controls, your start button, which you can program to do something. Tune, I love this switch. Uh, parking, parking camera. This only has a rear facing camera, by the way. It does have parking sensors all the way around, but only a rear facing camera. And then blind spot detection parking. Um, and then you'll see soon this capacitive touch area or this touch area is for your HVAC controls or your air conditioning and all that. Um, and yeah, your start button's right there. I wish they made this a little bit more fun, in my opinion, but just my thoughts. Drive selector modes are in this stock. It took a little bit getting used to, so you go forward. The direction you wanna go, you twist it. So I wanna go back, go back, forward, and then neutral is this kind of half turn. And then the parking is the button here. Turn signal, same theme, this kind of shiny plastic end. Got your windshield wipers, rear windshield wipers. And then, wait, uh, oh, this is for, um, sorry, uh, this is for the spray in the front. And then uh, turn signal stock, lights, and um, yeah, so pretty, pretty standard stuff. But let's turn her on. Put on the brake. Let's start. All right, this is the pretty much the screen that you'll see, and it's a pretty cool screen. I this white bezel is not what you typically see on most cars nowadays. Um, there's a clear split right here, and I think they did a pretty good job lining that up with your 
view with um, kind of disrupted view from the steering wheel. There is a closer look of the gauge cluster um, on the steering wheel. Let's go over some stuff. Drive mode selector. Love this button here, but I'm going to click it now. We have sport, eco, normal, sport. And from what I could tell, um, it just tightens up the throttle response, or in this case, the responsiveness of the pedal. Uh, regen braking seems to be a lot more aggressive. And the steering wheel definitely gets heavier the more sporty you go. Um, more about that. Uh, we have our volume controls, um, tuning controls, different modes. You could do um, uh, voice command, start button. I believe you can customize something for that. Phone, of course, different menus here. Got cruise control. Uh, radar, um, distance control between the car in front of you, lane keep assist, and then your toggle buttons and whatnot. These paddles are interesting, something I'm definitely getting used to. So I'm increasing regen, aggr the aggressiveness of regen. So it's currently on level three. So I think I'm in sport mode. I think that's why. Okay. So if I go to normal, I hit down. So regen is stuck at three, but normally what I would do is if I click this up, it'll go up. So currently it's at three, see that button there. And then when I click down here, it would go down. It would get less aggressive. When I drive, when I'm driving, it works, but let's give that a shot. So it's in drive. Oh, there we go. Now it's in, now it's working. If I just clicked it, see if we can get a better view. Zero here. So there you go. There's the battery uh, power. There's um, here's the gauge cluster. Let's give it. A, let's go take it for a little spin. And you can see how it act like works and visualize how this gauge cl cluster looks. So I'm on the gas slowly. I will say the audio level seem much better here in terms of uh, sound dampening. So I'm off the gas now. And you could pretty much one pedal drive with level three regen. What that means is once you're off the gas, you can more or less treat that like a light brake. Here we go, on the gas off the gas, gas, off the gas. Now I'll be quiet now so you can hear the car. There you go. So it definitely has, uh, I think, better sound um, detonating than um, a Tesla, but it's not a dramatic difference from, in my opinion. I have a feeling it's because of the how the doors and the windows are set up. Um, because the Tesla, I think it has the frameless doors or windows. I think that has something to do with it, but you let me know. Let me know what you think, but here we go. We're going to go into drive now. Forward. And then to park, press this right here. And we are parked. So we're parked. Car is on. Uh, let's turn on the AC, and how you can do that is just by the fan. It's just by the touch here. So a little 
lower the fan speed, the directions, circulation, defrosters, and the classic Hyundai text that you see in all their other cars, which is cool. I'm gonna turn it off for now for the sound. Um, but the overall the infotainment system, I think it's okay. Um, but um, yeah, it's pretty, if you have a Hyundai already, you probably know it really well, I don't. But I think the layout and the color schemes don't match that well, but I'm just nitpicking at this point. Uh, but let's go home. I wanted to share one thing, um, the warmers. So if you, this car does have butt warmers, but you have to use it, you have to use it in the infotainment, which is kind of annoying. There's no buttons here as far as I can tell and no buttons on the seats. So yeah, you're stuck with using this. There's apparently a heated steering wheel that I just found out. Let's leave that on, see how that feels. But um, but yeah, it's all done here. And I know that's pretty common nowadays, but I personally don't love that. Um, glove compartment, really deep. There, pretty standard though. And uh, front, you get a 12 volt and a USB port. In the center console, you have this huge gaping hole here. Um, I know my wife loves this because she could just stick her purse in here um, when she's driving, and then once she's ready to go, just pulls it right out. But um, yeah, this massive hole. A, um, I believe a wireless charging pad here. Um, you get two USBs right there. And then the center armrest has a little compartment. So it's pretty nice. There's a small grab handle here. There's like an indentation here, so you can grab it if you needed to. Cup holders, obviously. And then, um, yeah, let's check on that steering wheel. Very warm. Definitely works. If you're in a colder climate, this would be really nice for you. But yeah, overall navigation, if you have a Hyundai or a Kia, you probably have something similar. But yeah, pretty nice. Um, you got your parking cameras, you press that. You get your rear parking cameras and the proximity sensors around the car. Up up top, we have the dome light activators or the activation button, if you will. These are touch, or right there. Touch the symbol, touch. And then you can turn off or on uh, the lights when you close or open the doors. So yeah, that pretty much sums up the interior. The last bits that we haven't talked about would be the frunk or the lack thereof. And you'll find out very soon. Something that Tesla has that this doesn't, and I keep comparing it to Tesla because I feel like that's kind of the industry standard at this point. But man, I really love this these lines. There is no frunk as far as I could tell, unless it's this. I was wrong. There is a frunk. And there you go. There is the frunk for the Hyundai Ionic 5. A little compartment here. It is rubberized, so hopefully it doesn't move around too much. It says open, so I will. Or is it this way? Okay. Okay. Okay, got it. So there you go. Not for storage, the open port part. There we go. But yeah, you get a little storage up here. I don't know what you would put up here, but you can do it. That massive one piece right there. But yes, um, any closing thoughts? So far, I have love the car. There's a slight creak in the rear. I think it has to do with the subframe or the subframe bushings. I'm not sure, but it seems to happen. But for this, this is a um, 2023, it was manufactured in June of 23. The car weighs, gross weight of 5,600 pounds. And uh, yeah, I mean, tire specs, uh, 36 cold, 37, 36 in the front, 37 in the rear. It's a little bit more in the rear, one PSI. But yeah, there you are, the Hyundai Ionic 5 quick walk around. I love how the doors sound, by the way. Um, gives it a nice uh, confidence-inspiring thunk, if you will. There we go. I personally love this mat. Um, 
yeah, there you go, the Ionic 5. Thanks for watching.